If you want to grow your audience faster, you have to be consistent with publishing your content and you have to have confidence. I started thinking about this topic because of videos that I've seen over the years. It's not anyone in particular where um, they're, they're more high quality, you know, they're real, they have more slick production, but the channel only produces like one a year or one or two a year. And that's fine if you want to just store your videos on YouTube, if that's just a home for your videos and you're not really focused on views or um, growing your channel. That's one way to do it. But I, I couldn't help but wonder what how many of those people really do wish that they got more views or more people subscribe to their channel. And if they're waiting for these perfect slick production circumstances uh, in order to do their videos, they're not going to gain a following for the most part, unless they're already, you know, some celebrity in some way. Uh, but the average person is not going to gain a following because you're not giving anyone anything consistently to watch. And whether it's the case or not, it can look like you don't have the confidence to produce that work consistently. So this consistency and confidence that I'm talking about really go together because you don't publish consistency, you don't publish consistently rather, if you don't have the confidence uh, to share. And I'm not saying people with only one or two videos on their channel don't have the confidence to share, but they, they're not in the momentum of publishing regularly and that doesn't help you grow an audience from scratch. So I don't have this channel because I know everything and that's why I'm confident about sharing things. But I have a lot of experience and if you want to be a writer, I became a writer. I've been writing every day for at least 20 years. Uh, and through that, I was able to make myself a writer. So I have topics that I want to share. I actually have so much more than I want to share than I actually have time to make videos for, but I do what I can. So I have this channel because I have the confidence to share my experience. It's not because I know everything, and I hope you're not looking to me uh, to know everything or anyone else for that matter. But I have things to share, and I like sharing. And if I do that consistency, I can build an audience. And in the past year, I have built an audience from scratch on this channel, from having the confidence to share my experience and publishing it consistently. So I know these two things work, and I've done it in the past with other projects as well. But for the past year, I've been focused on video content uh, because I really like making it, and I've written so much over the years, and this seems like the next evolution of what I like to do and I had that idea a little bit over a year ago now and I was right because I really like making videos and I'm so happy that you are here joining me. So now I want to get back into um, something I talked about in my how to find your writing voice video which I'll link to in the description box below and this uh, video is packed with resources really because there are three articles that I'm going to be talking about um, that are sort of companion pieces to this video and I'm talking about three YouTube channels. So the first YouTube channel that I wanted to talk about that's related to the how to find your writing voice video is the Binging with Babish channel which is a cooking channel and I was not one of the early followers, subscribers, watchers of this channel and I really don't watch it that much because the food looks so good. I get really hungry when I watch food videos. <laughs> but um, but I came across it recently and I did a little research on its evolution. And so uh, the reason why I'm bringing it up is because when in the How to Find Your Writing Voice video, I talked about finding the intersection of your passion and bringing it to your content topic. And that's exactly what the creator of that channel, his name is Andrew, that's what Andrew did with the Binging with Babish channel. You probably have heard of it. I'm checking my notes so I get it right, but within the past couple days, yeah, the channel has 6.97 6 million subscribers. So you've probably heard of it, but maybe not. YouTube is, is really big. But that is an example of a channel that was built from scratch by a guy named Andrew who calls himself a home cook. He does not like 
uh, to be called a chef because he says he didn't that did not earn that distinction. So he's a home cook who likes watching TV and every episode of Binging with Babish on YouTube that he films is uh, he takes food that characters ate on television shows and maybe movies too. I'm not really sure, um, but it's like television movie fiction food and he recreates it on the channel uh, you don't really see his face it's just like his apron down and he combined his love of home cooking with his uh love of watching television and being interested in the food that characters eat on television shows and he created a content channel based on the intersection of that so it's not writing but it's the same idea of finding your voice and finding your brand through a combination of your passions there are so many cooking channels uh, and lots of them lots of them have lots of subscribers but he has a very specific voice on his channel and that's why he was able to grow that channel um, so I was excited when I came across that because it's a really great example of what I was talking about in that other video and then two other channels I have been early followers of that I wanted to mention um, because I can speak to knowing how much their quality has grown as their channels have evolved. So these two channels are great examples of you start with what you have. It could be your computer. It could be your iPhone. You start with what you have, and as your channel grows and you're allowed to get more high-tech and have more um, slick production stuff, you can do that. But you don't have to start off that way to be consistent and uh, and being confident. Being confident and being consistent are really separate from production value. And I think that's a really important um, point because so many people are afraid to get started um, because they can't do it perfect. Uh, from the first time, but you're never doing anything perfect the first time. There are so many growing pains when you start something new. So don't let that production value stop you. So the first channel that I started watching when she had uh, maybe a thousand, less than a thousand subscribers is the Pick Up, Lime, Pick Up Limes channel um, by a woman named Sadia. And she has 2.82 million subscribers now. And I started watching that channel when she had around a thousand and I've seen her production value go from you know kind of what we're looking at right now to uh, very fancy and uh, she was able to do that as she grew she didn't let um, that stop her from starting in the first place um, but she is a nutritionist who follows a plant-based diet and she from the beginning offered really high quality, high value information on her channel um, with accompanying blog posts and printable PDFs and worksheets um, and just a lot of free value, but she didn't have, you know, super fancy background things. And um, like I said, it was more kind of like how we're talking now to start. Um, but she was consistent and she was confident enough to share her knowledge. And uh, it's been really fun to watch her channel grow. I remember when she got a million subscribers, I think in a year, um, and now she's over 2 million. And another channel, a third channel with a similar um, story is the Frank James channel, which I started watching when he had less than a thousand subscribers. And he has about... 283,000 um, subscri subscribers right now. And that's just another case of him starting out, having the confidence to share what he wants to talk about, doing it consistently, um, and attracting a following to his strong voice and his unique brand of content by just going for it. And as time went on, he was able to add new things to the channel and um, make it you know, more sleek and fancy, but you do that um, organically as it comes up over time. You don't need to do it from the beginning. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of, this is a bit of an inspirational video, but I think it's also just really practical. And again, just reminding you that, um, you know, no YouTube 
a content creator has all the answers and is right all the time and uh, knows everything, but they have the confidence to share their experience. And if they do it consistently, they build big audiences. And the text resources that I have um, just sort of accompany this post to that give more details about how to really have the confidence to publish consistently. So um, two of them on Copyblogger I did not write. One um, is by um, Tim Stoddart, who wrote a post about how to grow a personal brand on YouTube. That will be in the description box below. He talks about some different things that, that I talk about exactly, but um, sort of the, the message is the same as um, it's important to just get started if it's something that you want to do. And then I have a post um, uh, a post that Sonia Simone wrote on Copyblogger about becoming an authority on nearly any subject. And that is really about um, how to build the confidence uh, to actually do what you want to do. Or rather, you know, work, work through what you need to while you're building that confidence. It's more of a tutorial uh, style post of things you can do right now to get over that hump of, well, will anyone listen to me? I don't know everything. Why should I even start? If you're wondering with questions like that, um, her post, uh, I think it's four ways to become, um, I should, actually I have it up. I could tell you exactly what it is. Yeah, it's four unexpected methods for becoming an authority on nearly any subject. I just wanted to clarify that because I don't know if I was explaining it that clearly without the title. And then the third post I actually wrote, and it's called How to Write 16 Knockout Articles When You Only Have One Wimpy Idea. And uh, that is about getting creative and taking one idea and turning it into lots of different pieces of content so that you do publish consistently. And again, having the confidence to share your knowledge every step of the way. So if you're not already subscribed to the Revision Fairy channel, I post videos every week. So click the red button below the video that says subscribe and also tap that little bell next to the subscribe button because then you'll get a note when I publish a new video for you and you can go watch it. So until next time we talk.